Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, How to Leverage Integrated Analytics to Break Down Silos and Elevate Your Customer Experience. We are pleased that you could join us as we have an in-depth discussion on how integrated analytics can break down silos to drive customer insights on a global scale. My name is Laura Beth Ezell, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. But before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items. Please note the slides will advance automatically throughout the presentation. To enlarge the slides, click the Enlarge Slides button. That's located in the top right-hand corner of your presentation window. Should you need technical assistance, click on the Help widget located on the bottom left corner of your console. Now, we encourage you to submit questions at any time throughout the presentation using the Q&A widget at the bottom of your console. We'll answer as many questions as we can at the end of this presentation. Following the presentation, you will also be able to access the on-demand recording of the webinar using the same link from today's live event. Now, I would like to introduce you to today's speakers. With us today are Philippe Ubin. Philippe is an expert in business intelligence and Salesforce excellence with more than 21 years of experience in data strategy transformation. In his current role as the head of data excellence governance at Beringer Ingelheim, he leads the development, implementation, and oversight of BI's global data, insights, and models governance program. Kapil Nayer is a technology enthusiast with more than 20 years of experience in building data and analytics systems across many industries. In his current role, he leads the big data and analytics space. Kapil has been instrumental in building ZS's analytics platform Revo along with its professional services team. Let's start with an overview of what we will cover during today's presentation. First, we'll discuss what it takes to create a great customer experience. Next, we'll talk about what it means to move from brand-centric to customer-centric. After that, we'll explore the challenges involved in adopting an integrated analytics platform and talk to Philippe on bearing her journey to elevate the customer experience and how they leverage cloud-based analytics. Finally, we'll discuss some of the key analytics platform features followed by the speaker Q&A. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Philip. I'm thrilled to be with you. Let's first step back a little and ask ourselves, what are we aiming as an industry? And the answer is deliver the best possible experience to our customers. Easier said than demonstrated. First, the first question we should be asking ourselves, what do we mean by the customer experience? And you know, there are as many definitions as there are functions within my industry or your industry. And there are also as many expectations as there are customers. So my recommendation and our definition within BI is quite simple. Let's see the smile on the face of our customers. But what does this take to generate that smile? Three critical steps, starting with the data and quite a lot of different data, of course. And those data to be used to generate some insight. And by insights, you can have a lot of different kinds of insights, but the most important are the ones you can action on. Action, tactically, but also strategically. And these are the most important elements that you need to build on your data. So let's first imagine and let's imagine a world where your customers would be delighted by what you're bringing to them, what your sales rep, your customer-facing teams can bring to them, but also your different digital channels. And the question is then, how do I achieve this? Meaning, which are the foundations I need to build 
And the data are the very critical first elements. And by data, we are talking about any kinds of data. The data you're having in-house, the data that are externally available, the data that are structured, or the data that are unstructured. But what is critical when talking about generating insights is really to pull all those data together, to move away from the usual silos we are having within our organization, where people on sales are having sales data, marketing is having marketing data, that market access is having marketing access data. And usually they are separate. So the first critical element is build those link, linkage in between those data. The second element is also when you want to generate that elevated experience, you need to have a cohesive story you're bringing to your customers. And not only your different channels need to be bringing the pieces of that story along, but also your different teams, being the teams within the headquarters or being the teams that are working face-to-face -face with the customers, are needing to work together to generate that elevated story. And that's only in that way that you can generate such kind of experience. Now, on the opposite, you can generate also a very bad experience. And let's take some examples. This physician looks annoyed. Why? Maybe she received an email with her name misspelled. Or she's receiving some content she's not expecting. And these are also small elements that can easily ruin any tentative to elevate your customer experience. I'm sure you did experience this recently, receiving too many emails maybe not the appropriate one, and your name being misspelled. How can it be? Indeed, we are still struggling with those foundations to have the data accessible, to take sense out of the data, and to build a storyline. So too often, we are generating that reaction within our customers being wondering, why, what is she talking about? Why does she bring this to me? Why is that company overwhelming me with so many information I'm not asking that are not really helping me? So the question I'm asking back to you, do you think really Pharma is ready to deliver that customer experience? I think the answer is quite clear. We are not there yet. And we need to be there soon. We need to bring our customer to a very good experience. Now the question is how? How do we move away from a brand-centric approach where over the last, I may say decades, I'm experiencing us, we were saying, let's plan, let's execute, let's measure, and start again. And we are all trying to move to the next step. Let's identify the different segments of physician. Let's analyze them. Let's plan, again, execute, measure. And we are pulling additional data sets to this and building on our data and analytics and visualization tool. But if we are serious 
about being customer centric. Let's rather connect our internal people, external people. Let's try to predict. Let's try to determine what is the most appropriate message to that physician. What is the best channel to reach out to him? How can we help him to identify the patients we should be treating? So we want to connect, predict, execute, of course, measure and adapt. Let's not be too stuck to plans. Let's see which are the different triggers that will be helping to increase that experience. So on top of our internal, external data, structure or not structure, we are bringing AI, machine learning, and ultimately what we are aiming for is not just to look at our data. But let's have a broader perspective on the customer. Let's have a better understanding on who they are, what do they want, and how we can help them solving their problem. Of course, it's not an easy story. And of course, there are some fundamentals we need to put in place. And there are, to be honest, a lot of challenges facing into that journey. There are some I would like to call out. Change management is in any transformation critical. The adoption of your organization from the very top to anyone using those outputs of models is critical if you want to give that good customer experience. That adoption needs to come also, of course, from the customers themselves. Are they ready to experience that experience, or are they expecting something different? I'm not calling out compliance regulations that are critical. Of course, all investment needed. But one of the other fundamental elements, it's really having your data disallowed. Currently, as mentioned, they are usually not talking to each other. Next element is also be on the same time very global into your approach to be able to have a sufficient footprint into with that transformation. But look also still what does make sense locally. What is slightly different? Which are the nuances? that can make a business difference. Then, of course, you need to put in place governance, the appropriate processes. I will come back to this. And also having a major organization with regard to data analytics. So one of the challenge, of course, is to gain the appropriate skills in and out. And also, not only to transform your internal people, but to attract enough talent to make this transformation a reality. So at BI, when we decided to go through this journey of generating insight on data and having actionable insights to take our business decision, we have, of course, been building on three pillars. First, the people. Second, the processes, and third, the technology. Talking about the people, and I like this picture very much. Look, where are those people looking at? They are all looking into the same direction, meaning they are diverse, have a clear ambition, precise it, and have the people endorsing it. When talking about the people, it's of course the diversity. You need data engineers, you need data scientists, you need to have also people with the business background who do understand how to proceed with this new way of working. I know the people is not enough, of course, especially when we are talking about generating insight and to take actions. You need to have clear processes defined. You need to know what's going to evolve in the day-to-day -day of working 
which is the transformation you need to go to, which is the role and responsibility of everyone who is part of this ambition and those processes. And you need also to adapt. It's easily said when you're building reports. It's already more challenging when you're talking about advanced analytics. And when you want to have data science, artificial intelligence making an impact into your organization, it's even more challenging. And of course, all this would not go without strong technology that is really enabling this transformation you're aiming at. Having this and talking about technology, I would like to hand over to Capil to go through what Vivo is offering. Uh, thank you and uh, thanks for being here. Uh, after Philippe, it's always hard to go when he describes this whole journey, so I get goosebumps there. But uh, we did uh, partner together last year, and um, Revo was, we started the deployment, and I'll talk about some of the capabilities, what we deployed and, and how. Um, so starting with an integrated data platform, uh, we brought in a lot of the data together from diverse data sources. Um, and not only just the data, but also very specific use cases. Um, what we have is the stencil, the modules, and I'll talk about it in a little bit, that accelerates the journey of getting a use case enabled for a business. Um, and we brought in a lot of the business rules, many of the industry-specific know-how within those components. We also deployed these use cases in regionalized way, so this is a global platform, so all US, Latin America, Asia Pacific, Europe, all of these components are being deployed in a very regionalized way to provide local uh, specific uh, capabilities, KPIs, and their reporting. Many of the pre-built applications were deployed, and a lot of the AI and ML capabilities, which are already embedded into the, these apps. Um, we won't go too much into detail, you know, so people start, you know, uh, getting uncomfortable with those, but uh, uh, there are many, many things that we started the acceleration and they're already live now. Um, we didn't forget about the compliance governance aspects. So there's a comprehensive data catalog, data compliance components that were also based in. Um, we also enabled our analytics workbench that allows a lot of the ad hoc capabilities that business is looking for to be able to self-serve themselves uh, from data, system rules, configuration, processes, many of those things businesses or IT power users can do themselves. Users can do themselves. To enable the advanced analytics components which allows uh, the specific users to be able to go explore the data that we brought in, um, look at certain new hypotheses, use new tools like Spark, R, Python to be able to build new AI ML models and be able to experiment with all of the assets that are at their disposal. Um, I'll also talk about so what are some of the key features that you should be thinking about when you look at these analytics platforms. As uh, Lee nicely said, really sets the foundation of how do you elevate your customer's experience. Uh, there are a few of them, I'll talk about it. Um, first of all, uh, you need to look at a unified platform, which not only takes your data ingestion to insight generation, but also all the way to insight consumption aspect. Stitching many tools together, it's just takes way too long and too much of a time consumption aspect. Now, these tools need to be very specific to your use cases. It needs to provide acceleration so you can deliver business value not in years and years, but in weeks and months. Um, those days of multi-year projects and many, many millions of dollars later, business fee uh, value, those are gone. Um, they're demanding results now and in a fast way. Um, the other aspect would be how do you deploy a consistent platform globally? Uh, the platform should have a capability to scale, 
to many, many uh, regions, and also to be able to provide capability to be able to do your heavy lifting, in some cases, um, also dealing with the compliance rules, which are very specific to these regional areas, whether it's U.S. or Europe. Um, I'll talk about the AIML capabilities, that, and those are also key things. Uh, a lot of those capabilities are needed. Um, you should be definitely looking for. Uh, but at the same time, you also need those guided analytics that a lot of the business users are still looking for. Um, those bread and butter stuff should come out of the box so you can focus on really the core analytics and, and making sure that the inside generations are being done. Um, last, the self-service part. It's, it's very important these days. It's becoming more and more important while business is expecting an agility where they want to control their destination. So they don't want a business rule to be able to turn around a change in, in weeks or weeks. Uh, they want to make those things themselves, uh, do it very often. So you need to look for a platform that offers you not only just the ad hoc data access, but also how does this data get processed? When can I change my system? Can I change certain rules on my own and run it just to see what outcome would it provide? Um, transparency into your processes, which are running today. Um, when it would be done? Um, are we, you know, are there any quality issues that are in the system? So all of those features should be available to you via the system and maybe power users can manage them themselves and not so much reliance on somebody coming in and running a week's worth of project just to make those changes. Um, so, so with that, I'll, you know, head it back to um, you go ahead, Khadif, and um, yeah, th th thanks, Kapil. And uh, there, as you did mention, a lot of elements that need to be considered. So my question to you is, what are you going to do next to improve the customer experience within your organization? And take 15 seconds, 30 seconds to determine exactly what. While you're thinking to this, we would like also to open the Q&A session. So ending over to Laura Bell. Well, thank you both. It was such a great discussion and appreciate all the points you brought up. Uh, we do have a few minutes left and we do have several questions in from our audience. So we appreciate our audience participation, and we're going to jump into those questions mm -hmm. now if you two are ready. Uh, question one here, how did you manage skill gaps or any additional work while everyone was still prioritizing their day jobs? Okay, that's, I think, a very challenging question, and we, we did it in two different ways. I, I think the one is I was mentioning their new roles, and, and to, uh, to fulfill them, the, uh, basically two options. Either, either you're transforming your, 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 the skills of your workforce, and BI is very well known also to take care about their employees, so that's clearly one option what road we took. Now there is also somewhat a necessity to be very fast with that transformation, so we also have recruited talent uh, from other indus industries that were more advanced with such kind of transformation. So it's kind of a balance, and we have been creating quite, quite a lot of new roles within our organization to be able to deliver from, you know, the data preparation that is completely different from yesterday within BI, especially uh, yet is having a major role into some activities, up to the roles uh, with regard to the data scientists who are helping modeling. And also what we have been doing, and we do continue, is to expose our very senior management to what is possible out of such kind of uh, analytical platform. What, on top of what they are used to, we can deliver. 
All right. Thank you for taking my question on. Next question here. How did you showcase the value to make the business case for the project early on? Also a very interesting uh, question from the audience. I, I think what, what is critical here, it's, it's a balance. Uh, I, I think Apel mentioned uh, numbers, and uh, those numbers are not limited. So what we have been doing by intention is from the very beginning of the project, demonstrate, yes, we need to invest, and, and quite heavily, if I may say, within the, this arena. On the other side, we also demonstrating through some advanced use cases that we do deliver balance. So from year one, if I may say, we are not only spending money, but we are also generating revenue within the organization being on the top or bottom line, but at least to demonstrate the business case. Great, thank you so much. Next question here, can you share any guiding principles that BI followed during this program? Uh, I can take that, Philippe. Um, so there were many of those, uh, but few of them that come to mind. Um, the, the key one was the agile nature of the program. We follow an agile delivery, um, and one of the principles we always follow is perfect is enemy of good. Um, we used to use that all the time because the idea was to let's deliver something if it's 80% there, if it's 80% meet needs and get that rest of the 20% perfection over time. Um, so that was one of the key thing, and it took us time to get everybody aligned to this, uh, where uh, everybody looks for everything has to be good, perfect, you know, when we get it out. Um, the second thing comes to mind was, um, uh, I remember change management, uh, what Philippe also mentioned. Change management cannot be an afterthought, that when, you know, we are done, we will talk, it was starting from day one of uh, comprehensive communication, stakeholder management, all of that we started on day one, not like when we are ready to start a training or something like that. Um, leveraging out of the box capabilities as much as we can. Uh, that was a key thing that every time when we started our discoveries or our phases, um, we used to reiterate that. And the key thing was not to recreate the current state, uh, but look at what are the questions we are trying to answer and, you know, are there ways that in out of the box we can answer those questions, the features and capabilities. So that was another key one to get the ball rolling there. Um, last one I could uh, think of was uh, the managed scope and timeline uh, very, very carefully. Um, there was a balance that we need to strike between long-term and short-term views, and um, we were leveraging product backlogs and some of those uh, agile techniques to make sure that we continue to uh, manage scope and, and uh, in, in, a, in a way that we continue to deliver on the timelines, but still don't leave the key components behind and, and not deliver on business commitments. Great. Thank you for that answer there. Mm -hmm. Next question here from our audience. What are typical areas that pharma gets stuck in when scaling analytics globally? Hmm. The, the, that's also a, a very valid one. Uh, I, I tried during the presentation to, to also demonstrate there is a necessity to standardize as much as you can. I, I would go back then to Kaplan's, you know, precedent answer. If somewhat, you, you want to be aggressive with the timeline because the market is evolving at a quite high speed that you, you need also to get along with. And, and uh, if you're trying to, to be perfect from the very beginning, you will not succeed. And, but on the other side, you, you know, uh, th there are some uh, localization that are needed. So it's always a balance, and that's where the governance is helping, or also allowing to, uh, to, to have the appropriate, and, and what, what we, we clearly communicated and aligned with, yes, at the beginning of the implementation was that 80-20 rule. If you are 
trying to do the the 100 person that is fitting locally you will never achieve it if you are you're coming only with 50 percent that it's also not valuable so try the the good balance the second element especially when we are talking about artificial intelligence is the value of it if not starting from the the the, the largest countries basically it's requesting it uh, adopted in a lot of different countries so that's also the way you can demonstrate value by building something you can repeat, extremely challenging, I have to say, requesting a lot of stakeholder management, especially if your organization is not a, a top-down organization. So you need to gain that buy-in to be able to, to develop and to roll something globally. But honestly, it's also by rolling this out globally you're generating economies of scale and you're increasing your business scale great job tack on that question there philippe thank you next question here can you describe in more detail how this platform is accessible by global teams across different geographies great question mm -hmm. sure um i can take that philippe um so um Revo is uh, deployed essentially uh, globally in three AWS regions. Um, we have Americas, we have Europe, and we have Asia. Um, the way it's accessed is, is a very secure single sign-on and high-performance capabilities because we keep the geography, geography close to the users, and all of those mobile and web apps are accessible. We also make sure that there are localized compliance needs that are also being managed through these regions. Um, so those are the key ways that the system can be accessed. Now, the access to the system is pretty much to the entire data, all of the functionality, and all of the configuration tools and, that are provided to our customers. So they have pretty much every need fulfilled through their single sign-on, so it's not multiple passwords or those things they have to mention. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question here, how does Revo take into account the diverse needs of Europe, Latin America, and Asia-Pacific regions from a data and KPI perspective? Okay, hey, um, great question, um, and and that was a challenge I mean, when we started the journey. Uh, looking at U.S., how it's different from Europe and, and Latin America. Um, but the way we have built Vivo, it's a global platform, but very regionalized view to be able to meet the needs. And the way we accomplish this is what I was calling uh, earlier, we were talking about it, pre-built stencils. These are essentially modules that are pre-built to, for example, uh, sales performance or digital marketing analytics. But they are uh, deployed in a more regionalized way. So the, the, the performance component, the data, the KPI that uh, US will see is very different from Europe, very different from um, Latin America. Uh, the data adapters, the business rules, and even the visualization, they are regionalized. Um, and that's how, first of all, we, we take care of the diversity. Uh, and also, we configure them to the need where there are exceptions are needed because none of them fit right in. So, for example, if uh, Brazil or Mexico is looking for certain nuances, this module allows certain countries or regions to have some variations uh, to be able to uh, stay within the platform but be able to run their business in the way that they want to. Uh, and that allows uh, globally to launch a capability across the globe very rapidly, but still maintain the flexibility to do certain things at the regional, at the country level. Well, that's all the time we have today. A big thanks to today's speakers, Felice and Kapil, and of course our audience for joining us. As a reminder, today's webinar will be available on demand, and a link will be sent to you after the webinar. Also, audience questions that were not answered during the Q&A will be answered via email. Have a great day, everyone.